Good morning, data fans, and welcome back to beautiful, sunny Orlando, Florida. We're here ramping up the morning at Click Connect. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, and I am joined by a fantastic, power-packed panel here. We've got Angelica, Jamie, and Priscilla. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. Good How are you doing? We're smiling. Good. We're excited. <laughs> We're well illuminated. Happy to be here. Yeah. yeah yes. That, that's important. Jamie, we have some. Ex you work with customers all day long, and you've brought two to our stage today. Tell me a little bit about them. Yes. I'm happy to be here, and what better yeah. way than to be sitting here with fantastic customers. So Priscilla's from Valoric, and based in Brazil, yeah. and Angelica is from Business Data Challengers, based in the, in the Netherlands, so we're excited to talk to you today. I appreciate that you brought such a global conversation right. to yeah. this stage. How much of, actually now I'm curious about it, how much of Click's business is international? Oh gosh, a, a good percent. You know, we're, yeah. we're founded in Sweden, right? So, yeah. and then Talend, where I came from, was was French founded. So we've got this really global nature, and you know, I bet thirty to probably thirty percent of the business or more is is international. It's a very global business. Oh, that's serving impressive. Serving many countries. Yeah, that's exciting. You have an interesting role, Priscilla, and I want to open up with this because you're doing a talk about it later. It was in the keynote. It's a big part. AI literacy is on everyone's mind. Everyone's trying to ramp their teams up in terms of, of their AI literacy and capability. How do you do that as a leader in, in the space? So I felt in love with the data literacy term in 2018. And since then, I started to study, I started to understand that we deliver a lot of data products, but uh, even the user look at that and didn't know how to do the things, didn't know how to extract value. So starting with data literacy, we understand that everything starts with data, data quality, data governance, data security. We move to AI literacy, that is the capacity that the user will have to understand the results of the models, to criticize the results, to, to know how to make questions to the data. So uh, uh, it's not just to uh, have a platform, you have to understand how to deal with that. So the program is based on uh, training paths for the users to understand better how to deal with AI. Are, are the team members that you're working with, are they excited, are they nervous, are they overwhelmed? We're at such an interesting information moment. Yeah. I feel like, and actually I'd be curious what all your answers are. So how how's the team respond when you come in and tell them that you're going to get them AI literate? Uh, training programs, uh, even we are living this hype, everybody's talking about AI, Gen AI, uh, some of them are a little afraid of what will come, some of yeah. them are very excited. Uh, we know that we have to balance the time because people have a lot of things to do, a lot of things to deliver in the work, and, and to put uh, training hours is a, is a challenge uh, situation. So for us, uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a culture uh, culture uh, problem. Uh, we have to deal with all this kind of feelings. Some of them pushing, some of them I want to go. So uh, it, it's it's a good challenge to work with. Yeah, I can I can imagine it's really overwhelming. Angelica, what are you seeing? Are, are you? Ex I know you're passionate about data literacy and AI literacy as well. People excited? Are they carving out the time? What are you seeing in the Netherlands? Uh, f first of all, I think still it's a hype, uh, yeah. and and my my biggest concern is that when organization or people do not even have the descriptive and the diagnostic phase of data literacy in place, uh, and start thinking about amazing wild things around AI, uh, I've seen it all and I have seen it fail. Uh, I think I think we should make. Uh, trainings like Priscilla is doing uh, in small blocks to get people excited and inspired, but also how to be um, how to be not to be concerned in, in in using it, but also the ability to question it, yeah. to question the results that you're getting, because don't assume that everything is right. Please don't. I think that's an extraordinary point. Just I think this is yeah, this is the skill set that will be the most important skill set for everybody all around the world in the coming years. 
louder for everyone in the back. No, I, right. I, I think that I think that's magical, and I do think I, we were talking about it on stage this morning. Trust scores. You got to be able to trust your data. I mean, this has got to be, this has got to be at the epicenter of a lot of the conversations you're having, Jamie. Oh, certainly, right. And you know, you heard Mike Capone say in the keynote this morning yeah. about garbage in, garbage out, right? And it's it's so mm -hmm. cliche. We've heard it for years, but it's really true, right? It's where the foundation yeah. becomes paramount because we're infused with so much data now, right? Like you, you just can't get away from it. It's, it's pouring in and so the more you make sense of it and the more you build a strong data foundation, that leads you to sort of demystify this AI bit, right? Because you asked the question mm -hmm. about what are you seeing? I, I think I'm seeing people embrace it, right? I think there has never been a more exciting time to be in tech, but if you're not enabled, if you can't learn, these are just buzzwords. So what's an LLM? What does it mean yeah. to you know, have hallucinations in the data? And people are scared, but as they lean in, I think folks are really starting to embrace it. So back to you, Jamie, actually, because I think that's a great point. You're, you're a culture queen. How do you create a culture around data? Yeah. How, what, how do you even approach that? Yeah, I think it is first by embracing it, right? And it's yeah. about responsibility, right? Because we can, um, we can buy any applications, you can use any systems, you can put models together, but what we have to do is be responsible. So it's like Priscilla said, you've got to educate. People are going to lean in if they feel like they understand it. But, but you talked about, we, our education team talks about uh, TikTok style of learning. If you put an eight, 12, 14 hour course in front of people and ask them to consume it, they're not going to do it. But if you can give people bite sized chunks of learning, get them embracing and understanding the fundamentals, mm -hmm. then you, cre you can create a data driven culture. And I really think that's the start of it. I do think that's, that, that is great, and it's got to be bite-sized, otherwise it's very overwhelming. Too much. You do data escape rooms. Speaking yeah. of making learning digestible, yeah. tell us about those, Angelica, I'm so curious. Yeah, uh, me and my friends uh, from the Smart Training Center, we truly believe in uh, that, that playing games is the highest form of education. So, uh, education and uh, the training sh should have fun mm -hmm. elements in it, and. And that's the way how you can test people. So the data escape rooms um, is developed to let four or five people from a team or from a company work together and solve a murder or deliver some information to the CEO that needs to have a press conference. Um, and what you see and what they fall in is the same exact pitfall that they do not speak the same language and they do the same tasks. While well, you should divide your tasks and speak the same language. And that is amazing. Uh, we played it uh, last year in uh, October, November in Lund with the, with the partner ambassadors and they all, and then they learn. Learn by having fun. It's, it's the best way to learn and also so interesting that everyone makes the same mistake. I would imagine that's a bit of a, 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 something that happens a lot across cultures as they're embracing data, is everyone's kind of stumbling over the same sort of issues. What are some of the tips or advice you might have, I'll turn to you Priscilla, as, as if someone's watching this and trying to improve their data culture, what would you tell them to do? Um, one thing that I really believe uh, uh, is that we have to start step by step, like Jamie and Angelica said it's not it's impossible to to I work in a company with more than 15,000 employees so we have to start with 30 with 100 with 400 with 1000 because uh, they they we can create uh, good advocates for a data literate uh, culture so for me the tip is to start little, it's to become big when you see that you have people that believes in data, uh, is able to extract value from data, so they will uh, help us to uh, spread this culture. Yeah, how, how about you, how, besides games? <laughs> well, actually, that's probably the best gateway, <laughs> but do you have any advice for, I mean, they should probably just play your game, but for, for cultures about how to really get over that initial fear or to not trust the results. How, how do you balance that when you're trying to get people to trust new technology, but then also making it pretty clear that they might not be able to trust that data? How do you balance that? Balance is key. Yeah. Balance in learning, the technical stuff, and the soft skill stu stuff. And that needs to be balanced out. We cannot focus only on technical things. We have to focus on the soft skills as well, like communication, working together, uh, speaking the same data language, questioning, statistical thinking. It's all in there. And Priscilla and I will be presenting 
our vision, uh, how to set that up for an organization uh, today at uh, two o'clock. <laughs> I love it, can you give us a little preview? A highlight from that? A little taste of your talk? Uh, well, uh, I think uh, we have the, the new framework that we have, how to uh, get your organization up to speed with data and AI literacy. Mm -hmm. And secondly, we will use uh, the, uh, the quotes from Mr. Miyagi's uh, Karate Kid uh, vision. Yes. Wax on, wax off, <laughs> and we combine that with data and AI literacy elements. I love it, you're fun, Angelica. I bet your team <laughs> likes working with you. I can, see, <laughs> I can see why you were brought here. Let's talk about the, the I want to stay on trust a little bit. Jamie, I'm going to turn to you, because I can imagine you're working with so many different customers, so much data. How can, how can folks level up their teams to be able to trust that data better? How do you get that data confidence? Yeah, so some of what I've seen um, have the most success with customers is, you know, make the data readily available. Um, Self-serve self data sets, govern data sets that have been uh, put out by our data teams to, to ensure they're trusted. You know, we have this trust score. It's, it's looking at the different elements, right? It's checking into where the sources are coming from, giving an employee an ability to validate that what they're looking at is trustworthy is, is huge, right? Because I've, I've had this in my career, right? I look at a report, the first time I don't trust something, you never go back to it, right? Like it fails you, and so then you're just sort of jaded about it's so it. so true, and, and you're not even going to be looking at any of those insights whatsoever. That's right, yeah. so it's just, it's a bit of waste. So I think it's, it's getting the data in front of them, giving them an ability to see that they can trust and validate it, and having the tools to do that is huge. Yeah. And how, so what are the factors that go into the trust score? Just because that is kind of a cool thing that was talked about yeah. this morning. Yeah, so um, we look at different attributes around the, uh, the diversity, I think we talked about the diversity, there's um, availability, right, the sources of the data, and so they kind of bring all those elements together and then run algorithms on it to see, to really arrive at a score. I was just running one this morning and it came back at 58, and I'm like, okay, is 58 good, right? It's sort of middle range. It means yeah. there's work I got to do on some of those elements, right? Is it the availability? Is it the, um, uh, where it's coming from? Is it the source? And then it'll tell me where is it, where is it the lowest? Why am I getting that lower score? So I can focus in on the area that I need to improve. Nice, oh I love that. No wonder yeah. everyone was so excited. There were some yeah, hoops and hollers. There was a lot of cheering yeah. in, the, in the audience this morning when, I, when everybody was talking about that, which I, which I really loved. What are, what are some of the barriers, Priscilla, I'm going to turn to you. When you're going out and, and helping up, level up the literacy, what are some of the barriers to getting buy-in? For me, the comfort zone, it, it's the, the, the biggest yeah. one because people do the things in a way and they think that way is the best and maybe they took hours to get the data to prepare, to transform, to deliver and maybe my number is different from Jamie's number, different from Angelica's number and, and if we don't have a, a, a buy-in from the executives to create this uh, uh, standard databases and, and, and to have this, this good data to work with and everybody believes on that, it's, it's really difficult because we have people that doesn't want to change, doesn't want to use. So this is for me the, the, the most important barrier we have today. Is that the same for, for both of you? Angelica, I'll ask you first. Yeah, I, I think it is. Uh, um, you know, there is always a, a threshold that people have to go over or you know, when you pass through a door, you always have to, like I came here mm -hmm. uh, on Saturday and I took a sneak peek to find my way because it's something new and I have to get used, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the same, maybe a little bit autistic, but you know, I like to find my way out. And that's what I, I love to do to help people uh, get over the threshold, try to understand mm -hmm. things, but start slow, start little, have that dot on the horizon and go. And then you will find the snowball effect that is yeah. rolling out. So my, my, my phrase that I also have written down in my book is uh, think big, put a dot on the horizon, start small, and then let it flow, scale fast. There you go. Jamie, is, is that barrier synonymous across all of your customer portfolio as well? It's similar. There were yeah. two I was going to touch on. Change was one, right? Change is hard. Most people don't embrace it naturally. Exactly. And so having the, you know, 
change management methodologies to allow people to kind of get over that hump, to get to that dot, I think is, is a big one. Yeah. Um, and then the other barrier I see is, you know, it's just the volume of data, right? And I think that it just causes people to say, there's, there's too much, I don't want to deal with that, right? It's going to be too hard. That can be really hard. overwhelming. So if you yeah. can make sense of it, and, and again, build that strong data foundation, I think that helps to break that barrier. I like that, yeah, yeah, it's important. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question that's definitely not in our talking points, because I want you to take off your, you can take off your professional hat, though you're okay. all very smart. You can leave it on if you want, but I'm curious as a, as a human being, not just as a, as, as a professional, what excites you most about our AI future? Priscilla, I'll start with you. You'll start with me. <laughs> I believe that we will have many possibilities to do things uh, faster, and to have more knowledge in our hands. And that's why I believe that we have to be, uh, uh, to, to be in awareness, AI awareness program uh, as human being, not just inside the companies. Because I believe in this future. I think mm -hmm. it will be good for us. So uh, we, we know we have to understand the, about ethics, bias, hallucinations and everything that came in this last months, but uh, I think we'll, we'll do things more more easy, uh, faster, and, and it will be good for us. I like it. All right, Jamie, what about you? All right, so work hat off on yeah. a personal level. Yes. I think the pace of innovation and the convergence of technologies and what it's doing for our lives is incredible. And I, I just read this book recently and I was geeking out because it went from everything, it was, it was from self-driving cars to what advancements are happening in healthcare and talking about, you know, we wear these rings that can tell us things going on in our bodies and, and it was going through this notion of, you know, what if we live to 120 or so, you know, that becomes more the norm. I'm raising two young children right now and so for me it's like the things they're going to see and the things that are going to happen so, cool. so much more rapidly than the pace at which we've seen innovation so far, I think is super cool. It is super cool. It actually kind of gave yeah. me goosebumps <laughs> as you said that because it really is magical to think about what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, hopefully, I'm magical. like, well, my kids need driver's licenses, or are they going to, you know, just like right. these things that were so common to us historically, I feel like are fundamentally going to change over over the coming 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah. Angelica, what about you? I think it will change. The, I, I think it will change the way we work. We mm -hmm. can do more in a better way. Uh, uh, I see. So, I, I did already some amazing projects, like a, a whole new way of engaging with customers. Uh, we will show some demos uh, at the session at two o'clock. Um, my colleagues at uh, at the Business Data Challenges, they are working on solution to improve MRI images oh, with yeah. a denoising technology based on algorithms. It's fantastic what they are doing. Another project that we're doing, and that's almost going live, is that we help runners to run better. Uh, so you can film a runner, and we put the algorithms in it, and then yeah, you can improve your posture, and so you will run more efficiently and, without in and prevent injuries. So amazing things are about to happen, I think, and, and I think it will change our lives completely, but I do hope we will be precautious, careful in the things that we do with it. Those are some really great words to close on. I'm going to have one closing question for you, Jamie, just so we can tease next year's Click Connect. What do you hope to be able to say next year that we can't yet say this year? Oh, wow. Oh. Um, you know, we talk a lot about AI being the buzzword, the hot topic. I hope that next year we are up there just filled with customer stories about what we've done and what customers have accomplished. We have a ton of it, but I want it to just be so infused in everything we do that it's less about the like demystification of talking to every customer. They all have an OKR or a KPI that they've got to do something around AI. I want them to have nailed it, right? Like nailed that KPI and they're rocking and rolling. That's what I want us to be doing next year. I love that. Well, we can't wait to have it and more lovely customers. Priscilla, Angelica, Jamie, thank you so much for being on the show. This is such a wonderful start to the day. And thank all of you for tuning in to our fantastic all day long live coverage here in Orlando, Florida at Click Connect. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.